let's meet our first guest tonight. Season two of her brilliant daytime show, The Drew Barrymore Show, premiered today. Please welcome the mighty Drew Barrymore. It's Drew Barrymore. Yeah. The more right. the berry. All right, check out her dance. She's doing it just the way she planned. Oh, my gosh. Like check her, her out her Check out that okay. outfit. Very classic, chic, 1975. Feel the energy right Thank now you, for the first time. Yeah. Drew, yeah. Drew, you're yeah. here. The song, guys. What I was treat. like totally lost in the music, and then I was like, pay attention to the steps. Yes. And then get lost watch again. The steps. We are so happy that you're here. Oh, James. I'm so thrilled to see you in person, and this outfit is sensational. Well, Woo! I am. Yeah. I, I dressed up for you, I and I've it. got to just comment on your waffle tie, which is one of my favorites, and nobody wears it, and you are bringing it. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Finally, someone said it. Finally, someone said it. I, if you don't mind, may I take a moment to say that you said something on CBS This Morning... Oh, God. ...that has... <laughs> not only changed my life, it's something that I want to blast on megaphones, I want to sky write, and I think it needs to become a movement. What did I say? You said, and I'm gonna paraphrase and, you know, I apologize if I don't get it word for word. I won't remember it, but go on, yeah. I'll never forget it. You said, I know this about marriage, that if I'm loving and I'm in a healthy relationship with my children's mother, they will see what love is supposed to be. And they might even know for their future what kind of love to accept for themselves, give others, and possibly even avoid something that isn't healthy or functional in the future because they'll have had that blueprint. Do you know why this is so profound for you? Because I was talking about what Barack Obama said when he was on our show. They're not my words. <laughs> I wish they were. I wish they were. I wish so much they were. And I agree with you, I agree with you, but it, like, uh, yeah, no, I've got some profound stuff in me, but no, this was in answer to a question that Guillermo asked, and I have to fess up, because if I don't, all of these people will chime in and go, that is bull <laughs> you never said that. <laughs> Obama said it over there, so well, that's why. All right, so there's an that's origin why. story there, but it was you that I heard it, so you will be forever associated with handing me something. We live in a society, I believe, that puts so much pressure on parents, and we are fanatics about trying to get it right, and you have to do it this way, and, oh, you didn't do that, or... It's like nobody can live up to the standards of which we have placed upon each other and ourselves. And by the way, when I grew up, holy cow, was parenting different. You'd leave the kids in the driveway. People smoked while they were pregnant. Like, it was nuts. Yeah. And now we've graduated into the helicopter tiger mom phenomenon where we are not ever gonna meet these standards, but why are we so hard on ourselves and each other about parenting? And why are we not talking about the relationships we have will form the ones our children will have later? I'm still hung up on the fact that it's mostly me who elevates Obama's words in the, in the best way. <laughs> and so you I did! Actually, so I thank actually, you! I actually switched off for a lot of that. I was just like, she's right. Without me, he's basically nothing now. That's the... <laughs> That's I wouldn't have thing. known had you not been the conduit, and I just wish for people that they could hear that and put that in the vernacular of the importance of parenting, that the way you treat your partner will be such a lesson and a blueprint for your children for their relationships in the future. Yeah. Now, I want to talk to you about this. You recently posted... I like, you posted this series of Polaroids from the early 90s. Look at all of these young actors starting out in their career. Were you friends with all of these guys? And did you ever realise, and I never realised, look, Benicio Del Toro, the spit of Harry Styles. Doesn't he? Benicio uh Del Toro, Harry Styles. Look how hot Vince Vaughn is. Who knew that that's what Billy Bob Thornton looked like? I know. Incredible. Uh, Billy Bob might be the biggest revelation on yeah. that grid. Um, what's funny is, is I'm right next to one of my best friends in the world, yeah, my look, sister Cameron. There you are. 
and we were friends at that age. So I'm glad to see us always side by side. I feel like I look the most like Benicio Del Toro in that picture, <laughs> which is what really surprised me the most. I, I, were you friends with all of these? I knew all those Did cats. Did you? Oh, yeah. I gotta tell you, the 90s in Hollywood was one of the greatest times. Um, it was very different than the 80s and incredibly different than the aughts. It was a unique time capsule where there was no phones, no social media, no cameras, so no one was worried about getting caught doing anything. Well, and that's why I think it was the, the last great moment to be famous. I think it was the last great moment where, like, being famous was, like, fun, and then now it's just, like... It's, an um, up-at-dawn, pride-swallowing siege. <laughs> You're just wondering, and I remember when that show Punked came oh, on. Oh, yes. I told everyone I worked with, I said, if you ever put me on that show, I will <laughs> never speak to you again, because I'm telling you, after living a life in servitude to being good and kind to everyone, I'm such a rebel, they're gonna catch me with my rebellious bull and they're gonna be like, I knew it, you weren't nice, and my whole life's gonna fall apart, so put me on pumped. <laughs> Ever. True. God. I love Thank the... you, Ashton Kutcher, for catching everyone in their worst moment and exploiting it. I love the idea of you <laughs> doing that speech and then Ashton Kutcher just walking out like, ah, oh, you're actually being punked right now. <laughs> By the way, he would have gotten exactly what he wanted, and I do give him credit for doing a show that kind of became a vernacular, like, in pop culture, like, getting punked. It's not easy to create a TV show that then becomes, like, a term yeah. in the zeitgeist. So he has my total respect, but I swear to God, don't do that to me. Because <laughs> I am rebellious, and if you poke me, I will bite. I gotta tell you, I have to tell you right now that I am now so excited <laughs> for us to do some kind of prank <laughs> on you. <laughs> like, I feel like we have to, don't we, Rob? I feel like we have to. It, it was an invitation. Uh, was that all that was? Was it an, an opportunity for us to run this clip and go, and then this happened? <laughs> Now, congratulations on the season two premiere of The Drew Barrymore Show. You launched today here in your hometown of Los Angeles. How's it going? Are you enjoying being up there at Paramount? It's, it just looks incredible. Um, I love coming home. Uh, I really wanted this year to be about, we could not leave our studio, we could not explore the country. Um, and I'm not a coastally minded person, even though I live in coasts. Um, I'm not a parentheses bracket type of person. I've lived all over the world in the country from my job. And so for me, this kind of there's no place like home feeling started coming on. And I just thought, how can we go all around the country this year and ask people why their home means so much to me, their town? Why has it formed them into the person that they are? So home was this theme for me. And then, you know, I, I ended up, on the premiere episode, I, I did this um, tour where I got in um, a Bronco, which is was my old car, um, and... Um, Recreated OJ's murder? No. It wasn't a white Sorry. Bronco. Sorry, I thought it you was were... a blue Bronco. Sorry, I thought... No, I, I, you, that's on me. Yeah, I thought you, you were going somewhere else. Yeah, you no. say Bronco, and that's yeah. where your mind goes. Yeah. But, um, and this was before. Yeah. Um, this was before that, uh, but... I, I went back to the odd little sort of broken down duplex where I grew up with my mom. I went to my first apartment uh, that I moved into when I was 14. Um, and I take us back to the institution I was at, you know, for two years. And I just want it to be an invitation to say, if you have gotten to any places in your life that you do feel good about, what was the journey? to get there, and can we embrace our scars and our bumps in the road and no journey is devoid of them? And I'm just an optimist, and there's nothing that's a downer or a bummer to me about the interesting things we fight through and struggle through to get to our better places. And so for me, it's a way to say, we do everything on this show, including this. Well, I couldn't think of a better person. <laughs> 
to spread such a message. I couldn't. Congrats again on season two. The show is absolutely <laughs> brilliant. Season two of the Drew Barrymore Show. Check your local listings for Showtime. Drew's going to be here when we come back. I hope you are too. Come on back. <laughs>